Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. In normal flight operations, climbing, descending, turning, cruise flight, and even landing without a wind, we always want to fly the airplane in a coordinated manner. Now that means that the ball, the inclinometer, is centered and that means that the nose of the airplane is going in the same direction as our flight path. But there are exceptions to adhering to coordinated flight. One way we can lose altitude, increasing our descent rate without increasing our airspeed, is by flying the airplane in an uncoordinated manner. That is, slipping the airplane literally flying the airplane somewhat sideways and creating drag. During landing, if we have any kind of a crosswind, we keep the wheels going straight by slipping the airplane, introducing aileron to stay over the center line and opposite rudder to slip the airplane and keep the nose pointed at the far end of the runway. Now there are two kinds of slips, a side slip when our flight path is sidestepping left or right, and a forward slip in which our flight path remains the same over the ground. The textbook definition of a slip is when the bank angle is too steep for the rate of turn. A slip is when the nose of the airplane is outside or on the high side of the actual flight path of the airplane. Another way to think of it is that you use more high rudder, that is the rudder pedal closest to the sky in a slip with the ball falling toward the ground, while in a skid you're using more low rudder, that is the rudder pedal closest to the ground with the ball high, resulting in the nose of the airplane being inside or on the low side of the flight path. I think this will be a little more clear as I demonstrate forward slips in a Cessna 172. Forward slip is a great maneuver we can do to lose altitude quickly without increasing our descent airspeed. Essentially what we're doing is flying the airplane sideways, uncoordinated, creating a tremendous amount of drag which allows us to bring the airplane down quicker. First thing we want to do when we do a forward slip is bring power to idle. It makes no sense to do a slip and have power and it's kind of like using the brakes and accelerator on your car at the same time. Here's a good example of why you may want to do a forward slip. I'm right near an airport, three miles away. Fallbrook is coming in off our nose now, but I'm way high. So a good way to lose altitude is to lower the wing. I already have a left turn going. I'll keep left aileron in, and I'll add right rudder. It's not an all or nothing thing. You can do partial rudder or full rudder, but this is the extent of what I'm able to slip this plane. 70 knots and well over 1,200 feet per minute. So I'm losing a lot of altitude without picking up a lot of airspeed. To recover from the forward slip, all I do is relax aileron and rudder at the same time and resume coordinated flight. Another example of when you would use a forward slip is if you want to lose altitude on uh, in the traffic pattern and you either don't have flaps or maybe you have full flaps in and you're still high. As I make the turn to final here at Fallbrook, you'll see I intentionally am way high, several hundred feet. So there's the runway. I'm still way high. I'll bring power to idle because you never want to use power when you're trying to slip. And I'll put a little left aileron, right rudder. The elevator gets a little wobbly here in the old Cessnas when you have full flaps, and it says that in the POH. It's a great way to lose some altitude, though. I'm coming down at 55 knots indicated and losing a lot of altitude, 1,000 feet per minute. A common error when slipping is getting too slow. Remember, the whole point of a forward slip is to dissipate altitude, so once you're into the slip, you have to let the nose come down to begin the descent. Control your airspeed by a combination of your nose attitude and how much aileron and rudder you're using to slip. If you let the airspeed get too high, well, that tends to defeat the whole purpose of the slip, and you'll have to dissipate all that extra airspeed when you get down to the runway. You'll demonstrate the forward slip on your private pilot checkride and perform a side slip when landing if there's any crosswind. If you ever fly an airplane without flaps or one with non-functioning flaps, you'll be glad you practice slipping. Have fun, fly safely, and fly often, and I'll see you next time for another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.